Good morning. It is a fantastic Friday. It's a hot, humid Friday, but they're showing a little relief coming quite shortly. Hopefully tomorrow, maybe later today, breaking the heat and humidity. It has been absolutely horrendous outside, but hey, blessed anyway you look at it. Thank the Lord for air conditioning. Hey, it's a great, great day. God's doing great things. So appreciate you joining this morning. Stay tuned. I'll be right back looking at authentic love. so worthy to receive praise and glory great and mighty works is he doing <laughs> through us with us around us about us but hey we're blessed we're blessed we're blessed we're blessed people god's doing great things so thankful for you joining with us this morning seems like it's been forever since it's been online but hey god is in control just let him do what he wants to do and all things will work to to the good, the are called and living according to his purpose. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, we're going to look at authentic love. <clears throat> I pulled this one out of the archives. <clears throat> Pastor Brett, thank you so much for your help on getting a computer lined up and so still working on it here and there, but my computer crashed and so uh, pastors got the one out of the old junior church youth group, got it lined up and working, so we're heading back to good days. It's always good days, blessed any way you look at it. But, you know, God is doing great things. And so we're going to look at Authentic Love. And December 31st, 1989 issue of the Chicago Tribune pictured a series of photographs of the best photos of the decade. Michael Fryer's image of a rescue attempt was a dramatic fire photo. It captured a fireman and a paramedic carrying a fire victim away from the scene. The blaze fryer covered occurred on December in 1984 at Irving Park and Kenmore Avenues in Chicago. It seemed routine until firefighters discovered a mother and five children huddled in one apartment's kitchen. Fire said firefighter surmised she probably could have escaped with two or three of her children but couldn't decide who to pick so they just chose to wait for firefighters to arrive all of them died of smoke inhalation the love of a mother strong and pervasive force no love is as genuine or authentic as that of a mother it is needed in all relationships today a genuine deep Unconditional love is required. One of the greatest chapters in the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, known as the love chapter. The Apostle Paul helps us come to grips with knowing if our love is genuine. How do I know if I authentically love? Why do you do what you do? 
what's your motivation for relationships with your parents, spouse, children, friends? <clears throat> what is the ground for all your Christian efforts and good deeds? Paul speaks to the issues and motives in the first three verses. The highest Christian aspirations and accomplishments are contrasted to love. If love is not the basis for all I do, no matter how noble or generous the action, what does it matter? Take away love, the essential ingredient, and all the accomplishments equal zero. Someone copied the following paraphrase from a well-worn carbon in the billboard of a 30-year veteran missionary. No one seems to know who authored it, but whoever it was, it captured the essence of the greatest essay on love ever written. If I have the language ever so perfectly and speak little pundit and have not the love that grips the heart, I am nothing. If I have decorations and diplomas and proficient and up-to-date methods and have not the touch of understanding love, I am nothing. If I am able to worst my opponents in arguments so much as make fools of them and have not the wooing note, I am nothing. If I have all the faith and great ideals and magnificent plans and wonderful visions and have not love that sweats and bleeds, weeps and prays and pleads, I am nothing. If I surrender all prospects, leaving home and friends and comforts, give myself the showy sacrifice of a missionary career, turn sour and selfish amid the daily annoyances and personal plights and sights, of missionary life, and though I give my body to be consumed in the heat and sweat and mildew of India and have not the love that yields its rights, its coveted leisure, its pet plans, I am nothing, nothing. Virtue has ceased to go out of me. If I can heal all manners of sickness and disease but wound hearts and hurt feelings for want of love that is kind, I am nothing. If I write books and publish articles and set the world agape and fail to transcribe the word of the cross in a language of love, I am nothing. Worse, I may be competent, busy, fussy, well-equipped, but like the church at Laodicea, nauseating to Christ. Genuine love is characterized by motives that seek only the best for the other. But that's not all. Authentic love pervades all our actions. It is evident in our character is what the next evidence of authentic love. Authentic love is active and expressive. It gets involved. The opposite of love is not hate, but apathy. Authentic love is neither passive nor indifferent. It refuses to yawn its way through life. A dad was trying to read the newspaper, but his five-year-old boy kept interrupting and he would lean against his knees and say, Daddy, I love you. His dad would give him a pat and say absently, Yes, son, I love you too. And give him a little push away so he could keep, keep on reading. This didn't satisfy the boy. Finally, he ran to his father and said, I love you, Daddy, and jumped up into his lap, threw his arms around him, gave him a big squeeze, explaining, and I've just got to do something about it. That's it, to know if we authentically love and we are not content with small talk love, the pat on the head love, we want to get involved, demonstrate our love, do something about it with all of our being. <clears throat> Paul, I'm analyzes love in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 and 7, and 15 expresses, expressions he shares a whole spectrum of love. He tries not to define love, but describes love as it relates to every area of our lives. These expressions of love cover each and every aspect of life, attitude, speech, actions, faith. We know we are well on our way to authentically loving when we love with all of our being. But another aspect of authentic love exists. Why is love the greatest? Because it lasts. How do you know if you authentically love? When your eternal devotion is love. Real love is not temporary, whimsical, wishy-washy. Real love passes the test of time. 
Paul reinforces this thought in 1 Corinthians 13, 8 by saying, love never fails. Fail means to fall. Real love doesn't fall, stumble when times are rocky. Fail means to collapse. Authentic love doesn't collapse when emotions are battered. Fail means to come to an end. You know you're in love when you refuse to run away. Fail means to be terminated. Real love doesn't cop out. It's resilient to the end. Lasting love is a decision to act and a commitment to stay. John Corll played football for Bear Bryant at the University of Alabama on three SEC championship teams from 71 to 73. He was a tough, tougher than leather defensive end who forsook a lucrative football career for something greater. He founded Big Oak Ranch in northeastern Alabama for boys nobody else wanted to give a second chance. Echoa County District Judge Robert E. Lewis, who has placed many juveniles in Big Ranch Oak, says that if everybody has as much interest in their own children as John Crow does in any kid, we wouldn't have delinquency in this country. It's that simple. When a young boy arrives at Ranch, Crow tells him, I love you. I ain't gay, I ain't weird, but I want you to know I love you. And one day you'll understand that. I won't ever lie to you. I'll stick with you until you're grown. I'll try, if you'll try to be the best person you can be, then you've got me for life. Authentic love passes the test of inward motivation, outward expression, and eternal dimension. John Crow passed the test. Did we pass the test of loving authentically? It's a difficult day we live in. A lot of things going on around us we don't understand. But we know God's in control. And a lot of people that we come in contact with doesn't re don't realize it, don't want to realize it. And it's so hard in these days and times sometimes to show that authentic love but we've got to allow the love of Christ to shine through us in everything we say, everything we do, any place we go. There's always somebody who needs to know the love of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you, praise you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to share this word. Help us, Lord, through it all, in it all, and above it all, that we love with your love, the authentic love that you gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And help us, Father, that those that you bring across our path, those times of trying situations come at us, but, Father, help us to always be vigilant towards you and know you have a purpose and a plan. We were created on purpose for a purpose, and that is to bring people to know your love and your mercy and your grace through your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this weekend. Help us come together Sunday and lift up our praise to you. We'll be ever so thankful and give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, y'all have a great weekend. They are talking about a little rain maybe tomorrow, late tonight, cooling things down a little bit, breaking the humidity. It's going to be a great weekend. going to be a great opportunity to be in church. Church is always better with you here. I understand there's people and places and things going on. Sometimes you just can't be here, and that's understandable. That's, but if you could be here, be here. It just blesses the pastor's heart to look out and see your smiling face. Hey, the lights are still on at the lighthouse. You're going to make it with Jesus. Be blessed. You're a blessing, and have an awesome weekend. See you Sunday. Thank you.